So Dr. Schultz, today we're talking about men who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer after the age of 80. And I think a lot of times patients can be put in kind of a system and we don't always pay attention to the fact that, you know, they're over the age of 80 and maybe they need their treatment adjusted because of their age and what they're able to tolerate. So can you talk about kind of what you encounter in your practice with men who are diagnosed with prostate cancer over the age of 80? It's a great topic big, and it comes up a lot. Uh, even in the textbooks, there's discussion in the urology world. Uh, Patrick Walsh, the inventor of nerve sparing surgery, always said that he wouldn't do surgery on a man over age 70 unless he brought both his parents to the interview. Prostate cancer, in its, when it's diagnosed at an early stage, uh, low PSA under 10, for example, is something that will take many, many years to turn into a real problem. And it makes sense to address it aggressively in a younger man who's in his 50s or 60s because we're hoping that they will live to be in their 80s and 90s someday. And if the disease five or 10 or 15 years after diagnosis starts to spread and they have to go on hormone treatment and they or even could face early mortality, certainly you want to eradicate the problem at an early stage. But how differently we would look at it in someone who's already 80, and I, I query patients about, uh, you know, would they be comfortable if I can get them to 97? And most people laugh and nod and agree. People that are in that age group start to get more practical about the fact that they're not going to live forever. If it's going to take 15 or 20 years for an early stage prostate cancer to spread, and create wreak havoc, will it not be a, a sensible approach to perhaps slow down in the aggressive treatments in someone who's over 80? And the answer is, of course, yes, but that's still just a principle. How does that work out in practical terms? One of the, the issues in the past has been, well, what is the Gleason score? Because that's how, or how high is the PSA? How likely is it to spread? We know that we can watch men with 3 plus 3 who are younger. Can we watch 3 plus 4 or 4 plus 4 in someone who's over 80? I think that that has always been a, a struggle until now we have these new PSMA PET scans. They can tell you whether it has already spread or not. That's an incredibly valuable insight that we didn't have in the past because we know that if prostate cancer doesn't spread, it's basically not going to be able to hurt you until it does spread. I um, have utilized PSMA PET scans in these men that are older and maybe even have higher Gleason scores and who may still be sexually active. People wonder, you know, are the, are, do, do people care about preserving sexual function and do they want to avoid treatment of the prostate to preserve urinary function? The quality of life is important for these final years of our lives. So all these questions come up, but I think now the idea of cookie cutter approaches. So if someone has high risk disease, they're 81 years old, and we'll give them 18 months of hormone therapy and we'll give them a seed implant or radiation treatment. Um, in many cases, it's gonna be a drastic overkill, especially in people that are thinking uh, that may still be sexually active. Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you that we're a nonprofit, and if you would like to join our cause and get these videos out to people all over the world, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my questions on prostate cancer over 80. So in a lot of our videos, we talk about radiation versus surgery. So would you ever suggest that a man over 80 years old gets radiation in what context? Very good question, and the answer is certainly yes. Uh, if someone has a, a larger high-grade tumor who could have spread because uh, we know we can handle a lot of early spread these days with these PSMED PET scans by doing spot treatment with radiation. I think the main thing we're trying to avoid in the elderly is ever needing hormone treatment. We already are losing our muscle as we get older, and if you block testosterone, you're gonna accelerate that process. It accelerates aging to block testosterone in an elderly man. Historically, our fallback position if the cancer spread was to put them on hormone treatment and it works very well, and it ensures that they'll never die of prostate cancer, but the quality of life will really take a hit. If someone presents at age 80 with a larger tumor, a high Gleason score of nine, um, you say this is something that is more likely to spread in the next five years and could necessitate hormone treatment. And so if you have an 80-year-old that's no longer sexually active, certainly, why not treat it? Uh, the, Main concern would be any kind of urinary toxicity from the radiation. You're not worried about erectile dysfunction. We have this new genetic test called Prostox that we can do to 
um, make sure that we don't administer radiation to someone that's going to have a lot of urinary toxicity. I think it can be done very safely at a center of excellence, and radiation treatment would be a logical thing to consider in someone with a large, high-grade tumor, even though they're 80 years old. So you mentioned hormone therapy. I recently had a patient from New York contact me. He's 85 years old. He is in the VA system, and he had CyberKnife for a gleconate tuber that was contained within the capsule, but his physician put him on three years of hormone therapy and he's having tremendous side effects and he's handling, he literally calls me and says, I'm going to stop hormone therapy. I can't handle this anymore. No one told me I would have these difficulties at 85 years old. I can barely walk. And so, you know, that's not, those specific side effects are not the case with all patients, but in somebody who is 85 and has already has an aging body, maybe they didn't, don't have the muscle mass to maintain that type of uh, regimen of taking hormone therapy. It's a very intense process. So what would you say to that man in that situation who is dealing with that? You know, does he stop hormone therapy? Is intermittent hormone therapy a possibility? Does he get a PSMA scan and they find out, you know, there's no cancer everywhere. Don't even do it. What would that look like? Right, yeah, I, I would tell them to stop the treatment, the hormone treatment immediately. The cure rates with radiation plus hormone treatment versus radiation alone are uh, slightly different. You'll get a maybe 10 to 20% better cure rate by adding hormone treatment to the radiation therapy. And in a younger individual, the, the cost of hormone blockade side effects is, is justifiable. It's totally ridiculous in someone who's 80 or older to try and buy an extra 10% cure rate when we have, now we have fallback positions with PSMA PET scans. We don't have to put people on, um, on hormone tre treatment immediately if they develop an early metastatic lesion. We'll just radiate it. The whole idea of adding the hormone treatment to the radiation is to optimize cure rates, to get every last percentage point of cure rate. Um, in an era that we didn't have PSMA PET scans and that we would have to put the relapsed men on hormone treatment, sometimes for life, intermittently perhaps, but still for life. And that was a devastating proposition. It's certainly justifiable to give it your best shot to cure it up front. A completely ludicrous proposition in someone who's 80. We we're, we're really want to help that individual never have hormone treatment under any circumstances because of its acceleration of aging and the problems that you're describing so clearly in this in this individual who shouldn't be on hormone treatment. Dr. Scholz, you're clearly, you know, not for men over the age of 80 getting hormone therapy, but what if somebody who is over the age of 80 is diagnosed with metastatic disease and it's visible and it's present? How do you handle that situation? I appreciate you making that distinction because we people tend to sort of jumble prostate cancer under under one roof and forgetting that the difference between localized prostate cancer inside the prostate and any kind of metastatic disease is night and day. It's almost like two different diseases. There is certainly a, a place for treating metastatic disease in people over 80 uh, because we have effective treatments that will prolong life. It's only the men that have metastatic disease that one could argue possibly have their longevity at risk. That That's that, it's not the men with localized disease. The men with localized disease, we have too many tools. We're not worried about them ever dying of prostate cancer. We're worried about the possibility, should it spread, that they would need to be on hormone treatment, which has devastating side effects in terms of their quality of life. But the hormone treatment's going to keep them in remission for 15 years. Now they're 95. Let's be realistic. We, we don't have to get them to live to be 110. No one ever does that. But metastatic disease can turn into a problem in two to five years. And uh, the use of hormone treatment or spot radiation in men that have uh, oligometastatic disease, mild chemotherapy treatments is sometimes called for in people that have hormone resistant disease. Uh, so th that's a different category. And I think the uh, people want to make a clear distinction between uh, disease uh, after having had a PSMA PET scan that shows nothing outside the prostate versus men that are uh, developing metastasis. It is encouraging now with PSMA PET scans, they're finding metastasis at such an early stage that we really feel like we're more ahead of the game. In the past with old bone scans and CAT scans, we knew that the spots we were seeing were just the tip of the iceberg and that there was a lot more cancer out there. PSMA PET scans are so much more accurate. We're looking at the lion's share, if not the disease in its entirety in terms of, and when we only see a couple spots, our approach is changing rapidly. We're just uh, zapping these with some radiation, 
PSAs are going down, and uh, men are experiencing remissions just with salvage radiation to metastatic lesions if there's only a few. So the new distinction, I think, will, will be between uh, is there just a few spots versus uh, uh, quite a few spots. The men that have quite a few spots need systemic therapy, hormone treatments, maybe mild chemo treatments. Men that just have a couple spots are probably going to be attracted to just doing radiation to those spots and see if that controls the disease for an extended period of time. So, Dr. Schulz, it seems like what you're saying is that for men over the age of 80, it really comes down to whether or not they have METs or they don't have METs. And it even sounds to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that men who may have higher Gleason scores than six could actually watch or kind of do active surveillance for those types of Gleason scores or tumor types. Am I correct? The bottom line, yes. Older men, uh, men that are over 80, who have higher Gleason scores, sevens, eights, and uh, the disease is proven to be localized, might want to consider skipping immediate treatment and watching the situation for a while, careful monitoring, which would be a poor decision in a younger man, but would be a consideration in someone who's over 80. So today we talked about being diagnosed with prostate cancer over the age of 80. I'm really passionate about this topic because I see many men over the age of 80 being put through a system. You know, they're told you need surgery or you need radiation or you need like three years of hormone therapy and we're not really bringing age into perspective here. You know, your quality of life matters before 80 and especially after 80. As your body is aging, we wanna make sure that you're thinking about, can I really handle these side effects? Is this gonna be tolerable for me? And how is this going to affect my quality of life after treatment? I think that sometimes we put people through a system instead of individualizing their care. Now the entire nonprofit that PCRI is in these videos is based off the fact that you matter and you're an individual. Your prostate cancer treatment should be unique to you. So make sure that you're advocating for yourself. I know it's a hard decision to even talk to your doctor or disagree with them. They're, they've been through medical school, they're an expert. Why in the world would a patient know more than them? It's not that you know more. It's that you have valid concerns about your body and it's your body. And it's important to talk to your medical team about your concerns because those questions matter within those conversations. The best advice I can give you is write them down beforehand. I know a lot of times maybe we only have 15 to 20 minutes with those doctor's visits and it's important to come up with a game plan, whether that's a treatment decision or a side effect effect mitigation decision. So, you know, you want to make sure that if you're going to go into hormone therapy, how do you mitigate the side effects? If you're going to say, I don't want hormone therapy and your doctor disagrees, get a second opinion, get a third opinion. Make sure that you're making an informed decision for yourself. Bring somebody with you that can help ask the questions, remember what the doctor said, even ask permission to record the session. All of this will help you have a better outcome with your medical team. Another thing that can help you have a better outcome is talking to our helpline. They can answer a lot of questions, do some research, for you, email that information to you. And so if you would like more information and you would like to talk to them, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash helpline. Now, if you would like to join our cause, we're a nonprofit and we want to get these videos out to people all over the world to help them. So you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. But the number one thing I want you to remember out of this video is that you're not alone. We care about you, whether you're past 80 or before. We want you to have a great quality of life if you can. We understand that prostate cancer diagnosis is very intense, but we want to be here for you as much as we can. And we appreciate you watching. Thank you for your time.